I was coming uh, I love coming technology. off of CES. <laughs> a, you're wearing wearable computing. Yeah. So wearable computing is this is this new yeah, trending topic. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. This idea, the, the more philosophical idea, if we can nerd out for a moment, is that we're becoming cybernetic beings, or the web is this extended human nervous system, and we're connected to it, right? Right. So as we develop these new interfaces, we will be able to express ourselves, maybe one day actually get memory upgrades. I know I could use one, right? <laughs> it's yeah. quite feasible, right? I, I think the wearable technology is interesting. Someone explained to me the other day, say for instance, how many of us have had our phone in our jacket or a oh, pocket yeah. or whatever it is, or where, or try to pull it wherever, right? wondering... you know, you got, it comes on your watch where it says, you know, Sophie's calling and you can yeah. either, you know, grab it or you can, you know, get As it later. More often does ignore. Yeah. But I'm saying that that's, to me, is a good, a good use of that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm not going to watch a TV show on my arm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to watch, you know, hey, look at that. But, I, but something that makes technology already e that we have easier mm -hmm. I think is okay mm -hmm. right well there's so many things that we want but when they actually come to fruition they're not exactly what we anticipated and one of the things that we saw at uh, CS this year and I think it's gonna be big, big this year it already has been but I think it's it's sort of hitting uh, a, a tipping point and that's 3D printing. And I have to give you guys credit. You did some really great study of 3D printing last year. But what was really neat about um, one of the announcements made at CS this year was they've come up with the first sort of 3D printed food product. Mm -hmm. Right? So this is like the replicator this in is Star Trek coming true. It's happening. I love it's it. It's happening. And um, it's called the Chef Jet. And the Chef Jet actually prints food. Now, here's a bit of a buyer beware it's sugar. And in fact, don't give it to your kids because it uses alcohol as a binding agent. So your kids would get a bit tipsy if they, if they ate these concoctions in, in uh, you know, any large number. Right. But, but it is food nonetheless, and it's, it's an early stage version of something you can buy that's going to make you food. Now, the technology is also into ceramics. They're printing uh, human organs. Mm -hmm. They're printing houses mm -hmm. near time and real time. So, 3D printing is here to stay and is only going to uh, get easier and easier and cheaper and cheaper in this uh, coming year. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, what's next here? Uh, the next thing on my list is Intel. Now, everything's smart. So, you're wearing uh, smart computing. You're basically, well, you're a little bit smarter with your Fitbit around your, your personal health and wellness. I can't figure out how to use it yet, so I don't know how, don't tell them. But part of the challenge, I'm not smart yet. Part, part of the challenge has been processing power, size, and energy consumption, mm -hmm. wireless technology. Right. Intel made an announcement this year, which is quite astounding. It's called the Intel Edison. Now, the Edison is a complete computer mm -hmm. the size of an SD card that you'd stick in your phone. Wow. That's a computer. So that's, it, it's everything. It's the CPU, the processing, the storage, you name it. So this little, little, little device, this dual core processing computer the size of a memory card could be put in virtually anything. In that case, they're showing a smart mug. Um, but think of this as a way to make, you know, we're talking about smart home appliances. This is a way to make virtually everything smart. Because now we have a computer this big. They spent all that money on the computer this big, and the best thing to come up with is putting in a cup that says hi. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I mean, well, really. It smiles at you. <laughs> it's an internet enabled cup that right. says Right, okay. Hi. There well, you go. Well, this is the thing coming off of CS2. I was wondering, do they really need to, um, you know, do we need smart home? Like, they had, what, a slow cooker that was, and a toothbrush. And I was right. wondering if these were really the things we needed in, in, in our society. Um, the thing that also around wearable computing is uh, there's a tennis racket, we have shoes, we have all these things. Um, but tennis racket is one thing. I think yeah. uh, we've seen a great, and here's, you know, we've got these Fitbit things on, yeah. but it's also computers are used a lot more for um, elite athlete training, mm -hmm. uh, technology training. We've seen the U.S. Olympic team mm -hmm. wearing these uh, Under Armour suits for speed skaters. 500 hours of computer technology has gone into making these. So right. to make them a quarter second faster, which would mean the difference between a metal and not a metal. Right. Right. So right. There, right. there is a lot of, uh, of uses for that kind of stuff. Fair enough. A mug, I'm not so sure. Yeah, well, it's the start. So it's yeah, the start, it's start somewhere, else, I guess. Right? It's a prototype to sort of showcase what they can do, and it all starts with a, a bold experiment or a simple demonstration. Mm -hmm. And speaking of demonstrations, there's an amazing demonstration going on. It's called the HTML 500, and it's one of uh, Canada's largest open learning events. Mm -hmm. So on February 1st, 500 coders, amateur wannabe, or semi-experienced coders, are going to go into uh, Rocky Mountaineer Station and in an entire day learn to code HTML and CSS. And it's free and open really? to the public, yes. 
and uh, there's various sponsors from the tech community. Lighthouse Labs is spearheading it, and we need this type of education. Mm -hmm. So many things, I teach at BCIT part-time, and so many mm -hmm. things that we teach there, by the time you develop a textbook for it, the technology's already changed. So in these high-tech spaces, you really do need right. innovation and rapid prototyping and rapid development of the educational itself. So the HTML 500 gets a huge shout out for uh, bringing a first to Vancouver. And, and when is that happening? It's going to happen on February 1st at the Rocky Mountaineer station, and the website is the HTML 500. The HTML 500. All okay. right, good. Thank you, Bradley. You're welcome. All right, let's get to Caitlin.